Welcome back. A stock you might not know much about is one of this year's top performers. Of course, if you've been paying attention to our unusual activity segment with John and Pete, the name C Limited might not be that far under the radar. The stock also happens to be one of the top investment ideas from Sum Zero, an investment idea platform for buy side professionals with more than 16,000 members globally. Divya Narendra is the CEO and the co founder of Sum Zero. He also co founded the company that would go on to be Facebook. Joe Flaum is currently an investment partner at Crane Capital. His resume includes stints at Soros Fortress and Tiger Management, a seated fund there. We welcome both to the show. It's good to see you guys. Welcome back. C Limited is your, is your big pick, right, Joe? That's right. So this is a company we came across uh, a little bit after the IPO in 2018. Um, so for folks that don't know what they do, it's an e-commerce and video game platform that's based in Singapore. Um, folks can think about it as an Amazon plus Activision for Southeast Asia. And uh, there's been a couple of interesting developments over the past year that uh, have played out, and the thesis has, uh, has started to work quite nicely. What's the stock done this year, right? We, we said it's, uh, it's, it's like beating the S&P oh, yeah. almost tenfold. It's been up, you know, almost 200% this year. Um, and so when we found the opportunity, there were really two components to the thesis that we thought were very interesting. The first was on the video game side, they were self-developing their own game for the first time, and this ended up being a global hit. Uh, and so at the time when we found the stock, they weren't monetizing that at all. And then over this year, that's largely played out, and you've seen the video game business quadruple um, in terms of EBITDA. And so that's largely what um, has driven the stock higher, in our opinion. But there's still another element to the story, which is this very fast-growing e-commerce business, which we still think is quite attractive going so, forward. So the 200% is just getting started in, as far as you're concerned. Look, I mean, you know, this is an emerging market stock, right? So that's associated with a lot of potential volatility for a number of reasons. Um, but yes, if you're a medium to long-term investor and you want to think about e-commerce growth in, uh, in Southeast Asia, today it's very underpenetrated. So when you look at uh, the percentage of e-commerce uh, of retail, it's about 5%. This compares to about 20% when you look at you know, more developed Asian economies like China. So they should be able to participate as the, the dominant player in the region over the next handful of years. Yeah. You guys, as I said, um, yeah. this name Hats is, off is, to you, Joe. This is one's known to our viewers because of you guys. Yep, we, we've seen time and time again institutions coming in that want a leveraged bet on this stock, on C Limited. They were coming in when the stock was 20. They were coming in when it was 24, when it was 28, when it's 30. You know, they've been buying strikes all the way up into the 40s now. Um, so uh, it's been a great ride for you. And for us, it's been a great trade because each time one of those options expire, then we reload and look again to see and the institutions come right back in. So they haven't soured on it at all. But if, if you look out over the next few years and you think of uh, Indonesia as being their, their big market now, is that is that right? I mean, that's where that they've got the population base and it's really made some, some real um, progress. What other geographies do you, do you see as the next sort of um, benchmarks considering that, you know, Alibaba sort of has the market in, in China, similar platform style, but she's done a great job where it's gone so far. Yeah, so your point is, is exactly accurate. So they have a big presence in Indonesia, but also the rest of the South, South, Southeast Asian economies. Uh, and so they don't actually really need to go outside of Southeast Asia for there to be substantial uh, growth over the next five years. So there's a report that came out um, recently by Bain and Company and Google. And today, there's about $40 billion of e-commerce that goes on in the region. Right. In 2025, five years down the road, uh, it's expected to be north of $150 right. billion. So we're talking about you know, a fourfold increase just within Southeast Asia. And so it's kind of early days, um, and they don't really have to think about expanding beyond that. Did so th this is a Singapore company, but you have consolidation going on in Asia, primarily in Chinese companies, I own Chang Yu, which is being acquired. It was a stub, and I've seen other consolidation. 
do you, is this a consolidation candidate or because it's Singapore it's unlikely the Chinese can, can acquire it? So that's, that's a great point. It's actually backed by Tencent, which is a company right. that most of you and most people on this show know. Yeah. Um, and so they own 33% of C Limited. Okay. And so that's kind of a nice place um, to be in partnership with them. It helps fuel their video game business. And then it's a potential strategic partnership down the road that could turn into something else. Interesting. How many uh, ideas are we going to have like this from, from some zero in the new year? Uh, that's a good question. Um, no, I think two hundred percent specifically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think what's interesting is that it was the most searched name on the site um, for the year, um, and there were numerous ideas on C. And when we were looking at it, we we're like thinking, gosh, like this isn't talked about that much in the mainstream. Um, but it seems like a lot of the folks within the buy side community are talking about it. You know, let's highlight it even more. Um, and you know, I think it's really resonated as an example of. Uh, a somewhat under the radar name where there's a lot of upside, um, you know, over the coming years. Look, it's not like you know the smart money doesn't know the name. I, I was looking at the, uh, the the shareholder base. You've got Tiger in there, Sachem Head, um, Lone Pine, Light Street, Co2, Whale Rock, De Shaw, Point72, Renaissance. Right? I mean, some of the some of the marquee names in the business. No, I, I think I think um, that's one of the reasons why why we you know we thought we'd bring it up to you guys, kind of in the context of. The fundamentals of the business, um, but also kind of the, the runway that it has, um, you know, in its two main verticals. Um, and actually, the third, which wasn't mentioned, was payments, uh, which um, you know I think is is also interesting. AirPay to talk about yeah, through AirPay, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. That's an interesting, uh, especially in the region where there's a lot of folks that aren't banked. So this is uh, an instrumental part of kind of what's driving the e-commerce business. So we're not really ascribing much value to it, but more it's a business that over time could be worth a lot, but also just really drives the e-commerce business. Let me ask you uh, quickly before um, I, I go back to Divya on, on something. You, 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 as we said, have a, have a great pedigree. Um, analyst at Soros, Tiger Management, Seated Hedge Fund, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how's the, do you have a market view? Heading into the new year, generally speaking, how do you feel about where the market is and where you think it may go? Yeah, look, I mean, we don't. We tend to be more fundamental-based investors. We obviously take a view on on the market and try to be opportunistic. Clearly, we're sitting at highs um, in, in many markets, um, and I think you know we're looking selectively for uh, attractive companies that still have secular growth that can kind of ride out some of the turbulence. Uh, one of the things that I think we're thinking about, which we're not macro investors, but that we focus on, is um, you know obviously the election next year, and you guys talk about it um, a lot, and so how that plays out is going to be quite instrumental, in our opinion, of how um, how kind of sentiment shakes out and, and where the market goes. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, obviously, about Facebook, as we as we said uh, in, in the intro, your your role in in the company that would become Facebook. We talked about it earlier. Stocks up fifty percent this year. Um, maybe you did see that coming because you never wavered off of your view about where Facebook would go, even in the face of the fire that it took on through the better part of the, the first half of the year. Yeah, I mean, I, if you just look at the engagement numbers on, on, you know, on the various apps that they own or the you know, various apps that are in their portfolio, they haven't wavered. I, I think that's kind of the, you know, maybe the most important thing to, to focus on, um, you know, for investors to get away from a lot of the noise around, uh, you know, what what uh, what's in the media about the company. I mean, it's clearly probably the most scrutinized company since Enron, in terms of um, sort of the the negativity around the name. But those are exactly the kinds of opportunities that I think investors need to to focus on, where you know you, you can have an opportunity to own a stock at a significant discount. Obviously, since the run up, uh, there's less of an opportunity than there was when the stock was you know sure. one thirties. But still, um, you know, I think the company is firing on all cylinders. Um, you know, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that's I don't think talked about that much in the press relating to some of their longer term initiatives um, in the AR VR space. Um, they just acquired a company called Control Labs uh, that you know tries to figure out how the brain can influence machines and it's just incredible stuff that can really create a roadmap. 10 years down the road. So I think of Facebook, the blue app is like Facebook 1.0. Instagram to me is sort of Facebook 2.0. I'm sure Mark is thinking about, you know, how to keep that relevant. Is it going to be relevant forever? Who knows? Probably not. Isn't that the jewel now? It, it is the jewel. It's a runaway freight train. When you think about the amount of 
um, e-commerce that's happening through Instagram and just the potential there for brands to really um, get the exposure they need um, and the monetization that results from that, um, I think it has a long way to go. But you still have WhatsApp and Messenger that are virtually unmonetized. Um, and then you have, you know, kind of other uh, things like Portal and, and, and hardware and, and, and a lot of the stuff that's part of that Skunkworks operation of theirs that we never hear about. Um, and I think uh, if you're interested in, you know, again, that medium to long term horizon and you want to own something that has a runway, I, I think. Dibby, what do they do with their cash? That was one of the topics and everybody brings this up all the time about Facebook is they've got all this cash and they really can't go out and buy people because everybody's against them now. They're the yeah. bad guy out there. Right. So what do they do with the cash, in your opinion? I mean, look, I think they keep investing in R&D. I, I think kind of the tech MO is to, to sit on cash uh, yeah. un, until you reach a certain maturity level where you, you, you do an Apple-like dividend. So I, I would expect at some point in the future, you'll probably see a Facebook dividend. They do have a repurchase um, program that's pretty significant. But I, I don't think they're going to do like a giant special dividend anytime soon. Um, I, I do think that once in a while they'll come across you know, a significant investment opportunity where they'll be able to deploy... Um, you know, not all of it, but but a, but a significant portion of that capital, especially after some of this regulatory scrutiny uh, tapers down. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been good having you guys back, Joe. It's nice to see Thanks. you, Divya. We'll see you in the new year, I hope. Thanks a lot. All right. Some options bulls are making.